Calaroga Shark Media. From Washington, D.C., where you know it's important if we did a bonus episode, this is Pod Save America. I mean, ballot. Anyway. That's right. Joe has a new VP, and his name is Trump. Let's hit this. We'll get to the press conference in a moment. But first, Joe was live on TV. But as the appetizer, oh boy, folks, get ready for this one. So, President Joe Biden, in a classic case of, did he really just say that? Managed to call Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky Putin, not once, but twice during a speech. That's right, the guy leading the charge against Russia got a surprise name swap. It's like calling Batman Joker at a Gotham City fundraiser. This whole thing went down just an hour before a crucial press conference that Democrats are practically praying will save Biden's campaign. Picture this, Dems, donors, and celebrity endorsers, all sweating bullets, whispering, he's got this, right? And then bam, President Putin enters the chat, twice. The scene was set at the Ukraine Compact Celebration, which sounds like a fancy neighborhood block party, but with more international tension. Biden, clearly on a roll, praised Zelensky's bravery and determination. He was building up to this grand moment when he'd introduce Zelensky to the world. Cue the drum roll, please. And now I want to hand it over to the president of Ukraine, who has as much courage as he does determination, President Putin, Biden said. Cue the applause, and then a collective, did he just? As Biden doubled down. President Putin. Oh, but it didn't end there. He added, he's going to beat President Putin. I mean, come on. That's like introducing your girlfriend to your ex, twice. You just know somewhere in Russia, Vladimir Putin is cracking open a bottle of vodka and laughing his oligarch pants off. One insider said it would be like Churchill introducing someone as Hitler. Anyway, that was just the opener. Biden held a press conference today, and it was wilder than a roller coaster ride through a retirement home. Our commander in chief kicked things off with a bang, accidentally referring to Vice President Trump. That's right, folks. In Biden's world, Trump isn't just living rent-free in his head. He's subletting the VP's office. I haven't seen a mix-up this confusing since I tried to assemble IKEA furniture after a few beers. But don't worry. Biden quickly recovered by giving us a foreign policy lecture that was longer than the line at the DMV. He covered everything from China to Russia to Israel. And I'm pretty sure he accidentally solved three global conflicts and started two new ones. It's like watching a game of geopolitical Jenga, but with more mumbling. When asked about his ability to negotiate with world leaders in the future, Biden assured us he's ready to deal with them now and three years from now. Apparently, he's planning to negotiate using the power of time travel. Take that, Putin. Nothing says I'm with it, like casually mentioning your DeLorean diplomacy skills. But the real highlight was when Biden claimed his poll numbers are better in Israel than in the U.S. Well... I guess that settles it. He's running for Prime Minister of Israel in 2024. Make hummus great again. Am I right? Now, let's talk about Biden's stamina. He managed to take questions for nearly an hour, without falling asleep, wandering off stage, or turning into a pumpkin at midnight. In the Biden administration, that's what we call exceeding expectations. It's like when your dog doesn't eat your homework. You're just happy nothing got destroyed. But wait, there's more. Biden also treated us to his famous loud whisper technique. It's like he's trying to tell us a secret. But the secret is that he forgot his indoor voice. I haven't heard a stage whisper that dramatic since my high school production of Hamlet. And let's not forget the moment when Biden said, Control guns, not girls. I'm pretty sure that's going to end up on a t-shirt faster than you can say malarkey. It's catchy. It's provocative. It's... Wait, what does it actually mean? I guess we'll find out in the next press conference, scheduled for some time between now and the heat death of the universe. In conclusion, folks, Biden's press conference was a wild ride. He proved he can still string together sentences, occasionally in the right order, and that he knows more about foreign policy than your average TikTok influencer. So let's all give him a round of applause. Just not too loud. We don't want to startle him. In other news, Jimmy Fallon kept up his biting commentary, JF said, I'm not saying things are chaotic, but right now Biden's campaign office seems like the kitchen on the bear. Whoa, dial it down, Jimbo. Jordan Klepper said, Keep in mind, Biden has said about 50 times that he's staying in the race. He's like, I'm not going anywhere. 
The Lord Almighty couldn't get me out of this race. And Pelosi's going, Yep, great. Just let us know when you decide. If you missed Donald Trump's rally yesterday, he had very important things to say like, Biden sucks at golf, Chris Christie is fat, and, and once I saw a hot waitress. Desi Lytic for the win. Yeah, you know you're in trouble when even Danny Ocean is saying, we can't pull this one off. Last month, he helped raise $30 million for Joe Biden. Wait, while we were all distracted by this op-ed, who was watching the money? Seth Meyers joked about Project 2025 saying, so moving forward, if you want to see a porn star naked, you'll have to do it the way God intended, by having sex with one during your third marriage. Trump lashed out at George Clooney on Wednesday night after the actor dared to pen an op-ed, suggesting that President Biden should gracefully exit the 2024 race. Yes, folks, the guy from Ocean's Eleven is now the oracle of American politics. Trump took to Truth Social, because why bother with real social media, and fumed. So now fake movie actor George Clooney, who never came close to making a great movie, is getting into the act. He's turned on Crooked Joe like the rats they both are. What does Clooney know about anything? Clooney should get out of politics and go back to television, Trump added, clearly forgetting Clooney's TV career was more successful than his own. Movies never really worked for him. So, what exactly did Clooney write to get under Trump's orange-tinted skin? In a New York Times op-ed, Clooney, who's been a die-hard Democrat and a top Biden fundraiser, wrote, I love Joe Biden. As a senator, as a vice president, and as president, I consider him a friend and I believe in him, believe in his character, believe in his morals. But the one battle he cannot win is the fight against time. None of us can. Cue the dramatic music and slow zoom in. Clooney continued, It's devastating to say it, but the Joe Biden I was with three weeks ago at the fundraiser was not the Joe Big Effing Deal Biden of 2010. He wasn't even the Joe Biden of 2020. And Trump, never one to miss an opportunity to stir the pot, shot back, he uses the Democrat talking point that Biden, the worst president in the history of the United States, has saved our democracy. No, Crooked Joe was the one who weaponized law enforcement against his political opponent, who created the most devastating inflation in the history of our country, who embarrassed our nation in Afghanistan, and whose crazy open border policy has allowed millions of people to illegally pour into our country, many from prisons and mental institutions. In short, Trump saying, Joe didn't save democracy, he brought it to its knees. Clooney isn't alone in the Biden Time to Retire Club. Following Clooney's footsteps, actor Michael Douglas chimed in, appearing on The View and echoing Clooney's sentiments. Joe Biden is a wonderful guy, Douglas said, possibly while polishing his latest award, but Clooney's push for him to step aside is valid. Meanwhile, the White House remains in full-on denial mode, insisting Biden is staying in the race. No word yet on whether they plan to stage an intervention or just keep hoping Clooney gets distracted by another cause. That's it for today. Tomorrow I hope to tell you who supposedly ate the dog. Hey Don and Joe, you think maybe we can keep the crazy down on a Friday afternoon so I can pre-tape Saturday? Thanks in advance. Portions of tonight's program were made with the help of AI and a double gulp of Dr. Pepper. I'll be back mid-morning with more.